watching me on television. On MTV channel 14 cable 65. It is my weekly honor and privilege the work of the government and also ensuring that we get the My priority here on making the case is to ensure that we always speak the truth, that we always provide the facts from any particular situation that is taking place or any issue or any difficult circumstances that is being faced by our government or our country. We always face these challenges head on because our messaging has always been consistent and the People's Progressive Party civic government is a government that cares, a government that is completely transparent and accountable to the people in every situation. And we will continue to execute our duties in office with the utmost integrity. So this evening, I want to welcome you and I want to invite you, as I do every week, to please share this program. If you're watching on Facebook, please click that share button so that we can reach as many people as possible. So I trust and hope that you all had a very good Christmas and that you had a very good New Year, one that, is, that was spent with, with family and loved ones. I wish all of you peace and prosperity, happiness, joy, and good health for 2023. And I look forward to this entire year, 2023, every Wednesday evening, spending this one hour with you, and ensuring that I provide you with the accurate, the most accurate and dependable information um, that you can rely on. Now, this being my first program for the year, I had anticipated a very light program tonight. But events of the past two days, today and yesterday, prevents me from having uh, a light program. And so it's one of those programs where we, we have to face the truth, we have to lay bare the facts, and let the people know exactly what is taking place. And the truth may be hurtful this evening, but um, there are certain things that must be said and must be made public. Um, so yesterday, and, and like I said, tonight I have to speak about a very unpleasant topic in addressing once again accusations by the APNU, AFC coalition, the leader of the opposition, the mayor, allegations made by them of racial discrimination by our government as it relates to the unfolding situation in Mocha with the Mocha squatters. Now, I have spent time prior to this evening on this program, I've spent a lot of time explaining to the people of our country all that is taking place in Mocha. I have set out all of the steps that we have taken from since 2021. And let me be very clear, the negotiations with the negotiations as well as the consultations with Mocha began since in 2021. We are now in 2023. So going back to 2021, the residents in Mocha Arcadia, the squatters who were there, as well as the local authorities there, were engaged by um, the Ministry of Housing and Water and its officials including the CEO, including Minister Kroll. And so we were there and we engaged the, the squatters as well as the local authorities there dating back to 2021. And we have had 
ongoing negotiations with them throughout all of that time up until now. Now, as you know, there is an ongoing project, the construction of the second phase of the highway from Eccles to Diamond. The first phase was completed in 2021, which is from Mandela to Eccles. And the second phase of the four lane concrete highway is from Eccles to Diamond. And the construction of this phase of the highway is underway. And this is, as you know, to ease the traffic congestion on the East Bank. And this will bring tremendous relief and benefit to tens of thousands of people who are living along the East Bank Corridor. So all of those people who live in Eccles, all of the people who live in Providence, in Horstelling, in Covent Garden, in Farm, in Diamond, in Mocha, all of those places there along the East Bank all of the people who live there, tens of thousands of people, will have access to this highway, which will bring the ease in the traffic congestion. And you know this is a much needed development, and many people are very, very pleased with the construction of this highway. And of course, we do not intend to stop at Diamond. We intend to go on from Diamond to Craig, in the third phase and that we are currently looking at that is at the design phase so when we set out the alignment we recognized very quickly that there were illegally the occupants who were occupying lands at the Caneview Hurstelling area illegally and this portion of land forms an essential link to the highway project. We numbered 35 structures or buildings that were there with families who were occupying there for a number of years. We engaged all 35 families. To date, 28 families have accepted compensation and have been relocated to nearby residential areas, including Horstelling, Farm, and Diamond. And they have already reconstructed their homes and they are settled into their new homes in their new communities. And you know these are established communities, these are old communities that were developed under our president when he was Minister of Housing so they are being integrated into a community that are communities that are fully developed there is infrastructure there are neighbors they have access to utilities inclusive of water and electricity internet all of it those communities have been fully developed now seven individuals out of the 35 remain non-compliant and they continue to stall this development and are making irrational demands, outrageous, irrational, and exorbitant demands. Some of them are demanding at least $100 million in compensation, and one person is demanding $150 million in compensation. Mind you, they are squatting, they are illegal occupants, but being the government that we are, we are recognizing that they have been there for an extended period of time and we have been reaching out to them for more than a year now, going back to 2021, and we are now in the beginning of 2023. The project is being stalled the development on the East Bank is being stymied. Many of you would have used the portion that is completed from Hagsbosch Road where we've constructed the new highway, uh, uh, sorry, a new roundabout. And going to 
um, horse stallion going to the horse stallion area and you have to turn off the road because the road cannot continue until we have the clearance there to make the connection through that critical link that is the Cane View horse stallion piece that is being blocked at the moment. So this portion is holding back the entire project. And so we put out a notice back in November of 2022 that this will be our final notice to them. And then we will move in and we will have to compulsory um, acquire that area and we will have to remove those illegal structures. Now, every effort that we have made has been met with resistance, irrational resistance. Although we have offered full compensation, the properties there were valued independently, not valued by the Ministry of Housing and Water, was valued independently. And this is a process that was not only engaged for this particular uh, movement or relocation of squatters in the Mocha Arcadia. But this is a, a method or a methodology that we use in any area in which we go in to take, uh, whether to construct a road or whether to clear lands for housing development. If there are people who are squatting there or if there are people who are farming there, we engage them, we consult with them, we ensure that an agency goes in if it is if it is that they are farming, we send in Nari to do an evaluation, we value the crops, we compensate people adequately. In addition to full compensation, we offer them a free residential house lot, which I mentioned, in a developed community nearby. We also extended a grace period to facilitate construction of their new homes. And then some of them claimed, and I did hear this on social media and so on, videos emanating from the opposition where some claimed that they were doing farming or cattle rearing and they wanted their livelihood to continue. So in addition to offering a free house lot, full compensation, grace period to rebuild your home. We also offer land for agricultural purposes to those who said that they were farming there or doing cattle rearing. We offer them lands for agricultural purposes through the Guyana Lands and Survey Commission. All of these efforts have been rejected by the seven persons who are there. And so it is very, very unfortunate that we now have to take this step, but it has become a necessary step. And it is a, it is a step that we never wanted to take. And that is why we have spent all of this time trying to negotiate with the people on the ground. We have officers and officials from the ministry that have been going there almost on a daily basis, meeting people, talking to people, trying to negotiate with them, trying to come to an amicable solution. The contractor who is responsible for that portion of the road has even threatened to, to take action against the ministry because his work is stymied as well. Rest, the rest of the highway is under construction and he is unable to commence his portion because the squatters are in the way. So then you put on the, the Facebook or, or the television and, and, and you see members of the opposition, Nima Flu Bess, Ganesh Mai Paul, Ubraj Narain, um, in the ring, Duncan, there, as well as the leader of the opposition. And what they are doing in Mocha is manipulating and exploiting this situation for political gain. 
and it is sickening to watch. It is absolutely sickening to see members of the opposition running into Mocha and calling this government, the People's Progressive Party Civic Government, calling them racist, calling us racist, and saying that we are discriminating against the people in Mocha because they are afro guides Now, I have had to deal with these allegations on this program many, many times, and it is never a pleasant topic to deal with. It is never a pleasant program to have because it is absolutely baseless. The allegations that our government has taken any action or made any decision or implement any program that is racist in nature is absolutely false. And I reject that outright. And I condemn those statements. And the people who are now running in there, what is amazing to me is that not so long ago, those people were in power. Those people were in office for five years, a good portion of that time, illegally and unlawfully and unconstitutionally. But they were in government for five years, not so long ago. 2020 was just the other day. It's been a little over two years. They were in there for five years, never spent a cent, not a single cent to improve the lives of the squatters in there or, or to do any developmental project in Mocha. And then you have all of these opposition members pompousetting in Mocha now running in there as soon as something happens. Or even if the, a minister goes in there, they're running in there to tell the people and to scream at the top of their lungs racial discrimination, which is absolutely baseless, and accusing our government of taking action in Mocha based on the fact that those are afro Guyanese. We have went into many communities that where squatters had to be relocated. They're not talking about that. When we go into a community that where people have to be relocated who are indo Guyanese, they're very quiet on that. They don't speak about that. We had a situation, a very unpleasant situation in success where we had squatters there that were squatting on Nissel's land and they had to be removed because that was brewing into a very ugly situation in success. And you would recall what happened only recently, not so long ago, a few months back, where a success couple who were squatting got electrocuted from an illegal connection. And they died and, and left their children. Now that is an extremely sad situation, very unfortunate. But that couple also were recipients of land through the Ministry of Housing's uh, housing program. And they chose not to do anything with that land. I believe they may have sold it, but they didn't occupy it. And they continued to live in the squatting area. And put their lives ultimately at risk. And it's very sad what happened to them. But these are the risks. These are the risks that people take when they are squatting because of illegal connection to GPL and so on. So we had that situation in success where the majority of the people who were squatting there were indo Guyanese, but we weren't racist then when we were moving those squatters. The APNO went blind, deaf, dumb. They don't look at those things. 
We had to remove squatters in Baltioc in Region 5, where we went to allocate lands for a new housing scheme there at Baltioc in Region 5. We went there, we met farmers there, we engaged them. Predominantly, I think all of them were, were Indo-Guyanese farmers who were occupying those lands illegally, but again, we recognized that they, they were there, they were earning a livelihood from there, their property was evaluated, they were properly compensated, and they peacefully removed from there because they understood that with development, sometimes comes a price. And with development, sometimes there is inconvenience. And they understand that the government was reaching out and they saw fully well that we were willing to work with them, we were willing to cooperate and to ensure that we reach the, boss, the best possible settlement for them and for their livelihoods. We weren't racist when we engaged those quarters. But now we have a situation in Moko where there are Afro-Guyanese who have to be removed, but there was no difference in the process that we used in other situations or in other places. There was no difference. Matter of fact, we may have extended ourselves even more in this situation. And we have opened up ourselves to criticism as well. Because there are some people who are saying that we were too soft in this situation and that we were willing to compromise too much and that this is taking too long and therefore we are giving more space and time for the APNU people to go in there and to jump around the place and to make absolute fools of themselves and worse yet to use the people in there against their own development because all of a sudden the people who are non-compliant want a hundred million dollars all of them asking for the same amount with one person saying 150 150 million dollars which is absolutely ridiculous and that kind of dangerous precedent will not be set by our government and so we cannot allow uh, the ongoing situation in Mocha to stymie the development to the detriment of tens of thousands of people who are depending on this highway to improve their lives so that they can spend less time in traffic, less unproductive time waiting to get home so that they can get home quickly. They can get to work quickly, they can be more productive during the day and they can go home quickly and early to their families in the evening. And this type of development is taking place across our country. And we cannot, as a people, allow members of the opposition, allow the opposition leader, the mayor, or anybody else to instigate us. And I hope that the people in Mocha are listening, and I hope people in other communities are listening and they can understand what I'm trying to say, with development, sometimes comes an inconvenience, but you have a government that cares. We will not act in a rash manner, and we will not make any decisions that will not be to the benefit of people or in the best interests of people, especially poor people. Our mandate is to ensure that people have affordable housing. And when we build a road to bring convenience to people's lives, or when we clear land for housing development and we find people there, we engage them and we try to find a, the best alternative for them and for their livelihoods and for their families. And we ensure that we we relocate them, we compensate them if we have to give land for agriculture purposes to ensure that they have a sustainable livelihood. We do that. And like I said, we have even opened ourselves to the criticism that 
we brought this on ourselves that, that we've, we're taking too long with this. But we don't know it any other way. Our government cares. And that's why we have exhibited tremendous patience with this situation. And the people in Mocha are getting a golden opportunity. The seven who are holding out, you are being exploited. You are being used. Aubrey Norton, Nima, Nima Flubes, Coretta McDonald, Sheva Duncan, they don't care about you. They were just in government the other day. If they could have regularized you, why didn't they do it? 2020 was the other day. They had five years in government. They didn't spend a cent. They didn't regularize a single one of those 35 squatters. And they're coming in there to tell you that they care? Where is the action? Where is the demonstration of your care, of your love, of your concern for the people of Mocha? You want to suffer the people so that you can gain cheap political points? I urge the people who are non-compliant, even up to now, even though we've had to go in with force, the government is still here. The government is still willing to work with you. These people are trying to set you up. They do not care about you. Aubrey Norton and Nemo Flubes and the whole AP and UAFC coalition that did nothing for you in five years when they had the power and they had the opportunity and the resources to improve your lives did nothing for you. Similarly, in all of the other areas where they're now running around the place and saying the PPP is discriminating and, and it's a racist government, the PPP, everybody knows that the PPP has been working in every single community across this country, in every single region. And this effort is being led by no other than the president himself. The president himself was in Mocha and in all of the, the other communities. I want you to take a look at some recent headlines. Only in the last few months, because our government is still very young in office, only recently, if you look at when the president uh, went to Mocha as a result of him going to Mocha, $192 million. Oh, that's my operator to just pull up there. They let make sure they can see the headline. $192 million in infrastructure development for Mocha Arcadia. This was a result of the president going there himself, consulting with the people himself, and then this money is being spent there. Then we had, when the president was there, he commissioned the 59 million uh, rehabilitation of the Burnham Boulevard in Mocha. The People's Progressive Party civic government under the leadership of President Ali rehabilitated Burnham Boulevard in Mocha. They were in government for five years, didn't spend a cent in Mocha. Independence Boulevard squatters to benefit from housing units. And this is as a result of the development that is taking place there in Independence Boulevard that is being executed through the Ministry of Public Works. Those squatters will benefit from housing units. We have no resistance from those persons there. All of these areas, predominantly Afro-Guyanese. Then we had the government, including myself, went into Beirut. Government delivers relief to Beirut, dazzle families affected by windstorm. Myself was there, Minister of Health, uh, Frank Anthony, Minister Hamilton, the Minister of Labor was there, the CDC was there, we delivered help. Then I was in Beirut again, where 84 residents received their land titles. They said I went to Pigeon Island, 
to give Indian people land titles, but they wouldn't talk about when I went and I distributed 84 land titles to residents in Beirut, predominantly Afro-Guyanese community. We're not racist then. Then the president went into Tiger Bay and commissioned a study hub for the people in Tiger Bay. This was very recent, just before the Christmas. This will improve people's lives, give them opportunities to study and to earn a living. Government working to advance agriculture projects in Buxton. This was President Ali when he went into Buxton, predominantly Afro-Guyanese community. 118 Sophia families benefit from $59 million in home improvement subsidies. This was executed through the Ministry of Housing and Water. We're not racist then. $1.5 billion enhancement project. Developing our voice down is part of our overall transformation plan, said by President Ali. And he was there in our voice down himself. APNU wouldn't talk about that. Government focus on development in Linden, President Ali assures. APNU, AFC, and Nor Aubrey Norton wouldn't talk about that. We're not racist then. President Ali announces skills development program for Belladrum. And this is in Region 5, predominantly Afro-Guyanese communities. We're not racist then. They wouldn't talk about these things. And this is, this is a handful. I can spend hours on this program shooting headlines all night long for days on our track record of two and a half years, less than two and a half years in government. And these people in the opposition want to level accusations that our government is discriminating against people of African descent. It is absolutely baseless. It is disgusting. It is sickening. It is a total lie. And I believe that all Guyanese, in good conscience, knows that. I am absolutely convinced that every single man, woman, and child in Guyana knows that President Ali and the People's Progressive Party civic government loves and cares and delivers development to all Guyanese in every single community. We go out there and we deliver for the people, people of African descent, people of Indian descent, our Amerindian brothers and sisters, irregardless of your religious uh, background and or your gender or which party you voted for. We will be there for you. That is the mandate that you give to us. And we will ensure that we execute that mandate with equality and with fairness to every single Guyanese. And so I am very saddened, very saddened, that the people in Mokko are listening to members of the opposition who have no good intentions for them and do not care about their physical well-being and do not care about ensuring that they allow them to take this opportunity of a lifetime to get themselves integrated into a community, to get access to a land that you can own where we will give you a title, a certificate of title, and you are getting the assistance to and the time to build your home, to relocate, and you will have that certificate of title in your hand that you can take to a bank or a financial institution or a credit union and you can get a loan and you can take advantage of any economic activity or start a business 
or do whatever you please because you now are the legitimate owner to that portion of land. You now have an inheritance that you can leave for your children. Your children can grow up living in an integrated community where they, you have access to utilities, to schools, to hospitals within those developed communities which will bring you tremendous benefit, which will bring you peace and security living within a community. But APNU doesn't want that. They don't want that for you because they don't care about you. So they're running around telling you about ancestral land and making you think like you have some legitimate claim to this land. But this land has always been earmarked for this development and they never had any good intentions for the people of Moko or the people of any part of this country. Otherwise, they would have gone in there and by now they would have regularized those 35 households, those 35 families that are squatting there and you would have had your titles already. But they didn't do that because they didn't give a damn about you. So now when they come in there, you should chase them out and you should point out to them that they did nothing when they had the opportunity, the power and the resources to do it to improve your lives. They didn't do it. So you shouldn't allow them to come in there now and to dictate to you or to tell you what is a good deal and what is not a good deal and to lie to you to remain there in hopes of what I don't know because 28 families have already recognized that this is for their own benefit and have taken advantage of the opportunity. I'm just keeping my eye on the time because I know we often run out of time very quickly on this program and there are certain matters that I have to, I have to get to. Now this brings me to one of the persons who were on the ground there yesterday and somebody who has been I don't know if he's taking set up or what but you know that's the talk on the street here in Guyana you know sometimes when you see somebody trying to commit political suicide you um, you say they're, they're taking set up and the mayor mayor Ubraj Narayan has been the chief pompousetter these days, throwing himself on the uh, trucks and, and, you know, screaming at the top of his lungs that he cares for vendors, he cares for squatters, he cares for everybody. All of a sudden, when his government was in power, he had no voice. He didn't care for anybody then. When vendors were removed from the Stabrook market area, silence from Ubraj Narayan and, and um, all of the other people that they removed and so on, silence from Ubraj Narayan. So yesterday, I gather he, he is upset that when he spoke in front of GPHC and was yelling and accusing the president of being racist and so on and displaying um, and, and said that there was racial discrimination, religious discrimination, and all of these things. When he was having a field day and clonging out himself at GPHC, I responded to him from the conference center. And I called him out and called him and his claims out that they were completely baseless and that it was sickening to hear him accused our president and our government of any discrimination. And so I gather he is a little bit peeved about my life, he didn't like it. And so yesterday when he was there, he referenced my life and also um, speaking about racial discrimination again in this particular situation with the mocker squatters. And then he said something very interesting. So it's a short video. I want you to hear him for yourself first 
and then I'll join you back. Same thing. Okay, that's being made for the East Coast people. The Indian area. I should do it here. Okay. That's what we try to tell them all the time. And only recently, Mr. Rodriguez went to the East Coast in Pigeon Island, where I have a property. And distribute title to the squatters. Okay, so the claim is not Post it up on the Facebook. Why the same can happen here? And how much is the people? And those are Indian people. And how much is the people? So that was Mayor Ubraj Narain. So he was referencing what I did at Pigeon Island, where we went there recently to distribute. Um, 16 titles to residents there who were squatting for some time. There are about 44 households there. And that area can be regularized. And we did complete the regularization process. And I went there to distribute 16 in the first set of the, in the first batch of the 44. He wouldn't speak about Beirut when I was there prior to Pigeon Island to distribute the 84 titles there and we have more titles to distribute in that area. There are over 300 uh, households there who can be regularized and will be regularized and we distributed the first 84 titles to residents there. So we're not racist then. When we go to the Afro-Guyanese communities, they wouldn't talk about that. He is fixated on Pigeon Island because that's one Indo-Guyanese community on the East Coast that we went to recently. But he also said in the clip there, which piqued my interest, that he owns a property at Pigeon Island. Now, when I heard him say that, and you will understand why I say, you know, he's just setting himself up. Because when I heard him say that, I was surprised because I know of one property that the mayor received through the ministry's housing program. So when I said, when I heard him say he has a property at Pigeon Island, obviously I wanted to investigate to find out, well, what exactly is going on here. So checks revealed that he acquired a property in Pigeon Island, indeed, like he said, very publicly, by his own admission, he acquired property there in 2015 and then later on he acquired a property in Bess on the west coast of Demerara in 2019 and then guess what in 2020 on the 11th of May 2020 uh, sorry, in April of 2020, he was allocated a land under the APNU AFC coalition when they were trying to rig the elections in the middle of rigging the elections. They were busy helping themselves and they gave Ubraj Narain property in prospect even though he was already the owner of at least two properties. During the period, so the no confidence motion had been passed, they were already in office illegally from 2018, December of 2018. Now this is April of 2020. He's in the ministry paying for land in April of 2020. Elections were gone since March and he's there receiving land in 2020, knowingly defrauding the system because when you receive land, and many people have asked me this question and they know the answer to the question, that you can only benefit from the government's housing program if you are not a beneficiary of land before acquired either through the ministry or privately. And so you are given a document a sign which says very clearly that if you, your spouse, or your common law partner are the owners or purchasers of immovable property, you are disqualified from accepting this allocation. 
and Ubraj Narayan knowingly read this and signed this document knowing that he already owned at least two properties prior to the allocation of this land from the Ministry of Housing under the APNU AFC coalition when they were in office illegally in the, at the height of rigging elections. They're giving land to Ubraj Narayan, they gave land to Ganesh Mai Paul, and they gave land to many others during the five month period. Up to the 3rd of August. Imagine President Ali was sworn in on the 2nd of August. And the Monday morning on the 3rd of August, they're busy scrambling to see what else they can get to help themselves before they exited office, before they were kicked out of government. And they want to go in, Ubraj Narayan wants to go into Mokka and tell the Mokka squatters and tell the people of this country he cares about poor people and he cares about Afro-Guyanese. Why he didn't leave this for a poor family? Why he didn't leave this land at prospect so that a poor fa family can benefit from it? But this is, the, this is the greed that we spoke about that is characteristic of the APNU and the AFC and all of the members of parliament, all of them, the whole lot of them. The only thing they did in office was to take care of themselves. And this is the type of evidence. And we know of many others. When they had scholarships, they took it for themselves, they took it for their children. They didn't distribute scholarships to people who can't afford it or to poor people or even to afro Guyanese. When they give low and feel hundreds of acres of land, the total uh, size equivalent to a thousand house lots in Linden, they could have given that to afro Guyanese. They could have given that to the people of Linden. 1,000 families could have benefited, but instead, one man benefited. This is the nature of the people. And then Ubraj had to sign an agreement of sale with a clause that's an initial the page. No one who owns any real property shall be entitled to purchase a lot. And he knowingly signed this document. So he lied. Because if you are the owner of property before, you are automatically disqualified from benefiting from the government's housing program, subsidized housing program. So this is something that we're going to have to look at. And the government and the CHPA will have to explore some remedy or some legal action that we may have to take because by the mayor's own admission, he owns property at Pigeon Island and documents prove that he was the owner of at least two properties when he acquired land from the Ministry of Housing, from the Central Housing and Planning Authority. So he knowingly lied. This document is false that he signed. And so he may have to answer some questions and we're going to have to look at ways in which we can um, reclaim this or, or there may be some some remedies you know when you want to talk about caring about people or you you want to talk about your own record you have to ensure you come with clean hands you have to have clean hands you know they say when you throw stones you must not live in glass houses this will be a good example um, of Ubraj Narayan so you have to make sure you come with clean hands and that we know is something that doesn't exist in the opposition because we have a lot of people over there with sticky fingers and not clean hands so everything they touch everything they do Patterson with, with David Patterson with all of the scandals with the bracelets and the bangles and the gifts that, that he gifted himself and um, we had this this other one this crazy one um, 
what's her name? Annette. Annette Ferguson, who uh, we have the receipts where she, the Ministry of Infrastructure, as it was then, um, the weird receipts show that bangles and bracelets were purchased for her as a gift. So, and then they want to come and tell people, oh, we care and, and you know, we, we will take care of you. And they're going out there to ask people for their support. You have to look back on the not so distant past. It's a very, very recent past. And remember the things that they did. Remember that when they had the opportunity, they looked after themselves. We are a government that has been giving consistent increases in salaries and benefits to our public servants. They took 50 to 100% increase in salary for themselves. For two years now, consistently, we've been giving public servants salary increases, and we will continue to do so. And in addition to salary increases, we have been giving selected increases to ensure that all of the disparities that existed within the system before, that there is now fairness and there is now equality in the system, so that somebody who benefits, who has a degree, for example, in working at one ministry or one agency, can receive the exact same salary of a person who has the same qualification and working in a different agency. Same public servant, same qualification, same salary scale. So that was a, an inequity that existed in the system that we had to fix. And it existed in the police force, in the medical profession, and the president has been consistently addressing the welfare of our public servants. And this is just the beginning. We have so much more yet to do. And it is, it is sad to see these people and Ubraj Narayan, this hypocrite Ubraj Narayan, to go out there and talk about racial discrimination and Afro-Guyanese and knowing that he lied, that he signed a document declaring that he doesn't have any assets or own any property, has two properties at least, and collecting land from the government. You care about poor people, you should have left it for a poor family. It would have been one more for us to give to a poor family. But no, the greed has taken over. And they want you to think that they care about you. So they go out in the communities and oh, he'll throw himself under the truck and, and put on a whole theatrical show to say to people, look at me, look at me, I care about you, let them arrest me. I care about you, your noble and humble public servant who is then stealing land, knowingly defrauding the government. That's what the, that's what the APNU is good for. That is exactly what they're good for. Frauds, all of them, a bunch of frauds. They'll tell you one thing, and behind closed doors, they do the opposite, and they look after themselves. They don't care about any person in this country, including afro Guyanese. They rather punish the people in Mocha, feed them all kinds of lies, instigate them, and in the hopes that they will not benefit from a People's Progressive Party civic project or program. They rather suffer the people than have them benefit from consultations and from a resolution that we are willingly offering them. All of the people in Moko, this is just 35 households that have to be, remo be removed because of the the road network. But all of the other people in the communities will remain there and will drive on that same highway when it is completed. So they're saying to people, oh, the road is not passing here and all of this. What's gonna, what are you gonna tell the people in by this year end or before this year end when they watch this highway, this highway with their own eyes in their faces and all of the other Houses and, and families who live there will benefit from the increase in their net worth and the increase in their property value that will, will take place there once that highway is built and will benefit from the 
the, the ease of traveling on that same highway. You don't have to show a PPP card to drive on this highway. There is no uh, ticketing agent that will have to scan you before you, you drive on the highway. All Guyanese will drive on the highway. Everybody who live along that route will benefit from the highway. The president was there only recently to ensure that all of the communities connect to the highway so that we can, we can receive the full use and the full potential that the highway was built there for. And then all of the, the land that will open up on the other side of the highway, the eastern side of the highway, all of those lands will be opened up as well for housing development and for more people to have access to affordable housing through our People's Progressive Party Civic Housing Program. So going and tell Afro-Guyanese not to work with the government or telling people nonsense about ancestral land and, and crying over the, the, the remaining seven households that have to now be forcefully removed. In a, in, in, to put that into context, we have distributed over 20,000 house lots already. 50 or more percent of that went to Afro-Guyanese. So when Nima Flubes wants to give herself relevance or importance by inserting herself in the middle of what's going on at Mocha there, she must remember that over 10,000 Afro-Guyanese didn't have access to house lots before the PPP came to government in 2020. I'm not even speaking about our record in office from 1992 to 2014. Just over the last two years alone, with our aggressive housing program, where we've distributed over 20,000 house lots, more than 50%, or we can approximate, because we don't track these things, because we don't need to know whether you're Indo-Guyanese or Afro-Guyanese. If you're Guyanese, you'll benefit. But just given the, the nature of our country being almost split evenly, with Afro-Guyanese, Indo-Guyanese, and mixed people, Amerindian people. You can tell, you will know, that more people benefited, more Afro-Guyanese benefited in the last two years from access to house lots than they benefited in five years under the APNU AFC. So I am always amazed and intrigued when I see any member of the opposition, Annette Ferguson, the mayor, Ganesh Maipal, um, the rain guy, and Aubrey Norton, when they talk about housing, I don't know why they talk about housing. Because they have such a despicable record in the housing sector. They have no authority to speak about access to land for Afro-Guyanese because they did nothing. They offered nothing for the development of Afro-Guyanese. And this is, are we only talking about land? I went through so many other programs that we have in government, including the, the study hub that our president just launched in Tiger Bay so that school dropouts or people who need to write um, CXC or who need a second shot at life, just a chance at life can get it. And so we will continue regardless of whatever they say. And they can say whatever they please, it doesn't affect us. Because they can scream and shout and throw themselves down and lie down on the trucks and so on. And our record will speak for us. Our record in government will speak for us. And the evidence is irrefutable. Our, ev our track record of delivering for every single Guyanese is irrefutable. I want to thank you for joining me this evening. Unfortunately, I am completely out of time. But if you haven't shared this program as yet, please do so now so that we can reach 
as many people as far and as wide as possible. I want to thank you for staying with me this past hour and I look forward to joining you every Wednesday evening right here on this program. Please continue to be safe, have a productive week, and I will see you next week. Good night.